Bidip Nui Ba National Park in the South Central Highlands of Vietnam. That weird sound? It's not birds in the treetops. It's a scientist penetrating an ancient tree with a big corkscrew, part of a project that employs tree rings to study past climates in Asia and how climate change could affect Asia's future. Researchers from the Tree Ring Lab at Columbia University's Lamont Darty Earth Observatory are trying to unravel the history of the Asian monsoon, the rainy season that runs roughly May to October and feeds all crops. Much of Asia is dry the rest of the year. The monsoon is key to feeding nearly half the world's population. Now we have evidence that this rain cycle has seen extreme ups and downs that caused past famines and floods. And scientists think that rising global temperature could make it more extreme. In order to plan for the future, we must understand the past. What's that got to do with tree rings? Everything. Many trees expand by adding one or more visible growth rings each year. Counting may tell a tree's age, but rings can tell a lot more. For instance, rings may grow wider or narrower in response to shifting yearly temperature and rainfall. Commonly, more rain means more ring. Scientists have learned to read some species like books. They tell the story of the weather season by season, long before modern instruments or written records. This science is called dendrochronology. Here's Lamont dendrochronologist Brendan Buckley. Well, we'd, we'd probably study uh, rain gauges if we had them that went back a thousand years. So the tree rings give us the ability to simulate a rain gauge that goes back that far. So we have the ability to look at not only rainfall from a single site, but multiple locations uh, based on this one species that we know has a great response to moisture availability. And now we can start to piece together what the spatial patterns look like of how rainfall was distributed over the last millennium. That's really important for projecting into the future. Since 2004, the Tree Ring Lab has worked with colleagues in many nations to assemble records from trees across Asia, from India to Southeast Asia, up into China and Japan. There is Vietnam's Bi Dup Nui Ba National Park, where Buckley has been working recently. In its highest parts, the park is a mile above sea level. It's a long trip in there with rangers, up slopes, through brush, over streams, and finally through deep cloud forests along the ridge tops. Because it's so remote, it harbors some of Asia's last remaining old growth pomu trees, a long lived type of cypress prized for lumber and for rings. Some of these Methuselahs have stood for over 10 centuries and hold records of monsoons from the days of long vanished civilizations. But how do you see the rings without chopping down the tree? That's where the big corkscrew comes in. It's a tree corer, basically a hollow bit drill like an apple corer. You stick it in, push hard, and start turning, and turning, and turning. This is not trivial work. It takes plenty of muscle and sweat. You try to hit the oldest wood at the center. Then you pull out the core. A good core clearly shows every ring. Look at this. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Oh, baby. That's an old tree. It's a dendrochronologist's delight. And it doesn't hurt the tree. To get a reliable picture, the team needs samples from many trees, so everyone has to vote. After a few days in the woods, bundles of cores are ready for shipment to the lab. That's where the real work begins. Months of microscopic inspection to date the rings, compare them with each other, and translate them into yearly rainfall data. Here's a chart of rainfall since the 1300s measured by pomu trees at Bidup Nui Ba. What they reveal is startling. Shown here in red is a reconstruction of devastating mega droughts that have swept successive regions of Asia over the past 600 years. During some of these periods, the rains failed for decades. This one here, spanning what is now Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand occurred from 1362 to 1392 then again from 1415 to 1440. Archaeologists have long puzzled over why the great Angkor civilization of southern Cambodia mysteriously collapsed around this time. Angkor, it turns out, was highly dependent on irrigation. With this new climate data in hand, it looks like failure of the monsoon may have helped kill an entire society. Rings show similar droughts in the late 1700s, 
during the downfalls of other powerful kingdoms in Siam, Burma, and Vietnam. Rice paper scrolls from this time, kept in Buddhist temples, were recently translated in Thailand. They corroborate the tree rings with accounts of extreme weather, including floods, as well as famine. This is not just ancient history. Modern weather measurements, along with natural records like tree rings, suggest that the monsoon is governed by natural interconnecting cycles of rising and falling temperatures in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. These cycles, including the one known as El Nino, may repeat over months, years, or decades. These, in turn, drive patterns of evaporation, wind, and precipitation across the Asian landmass. That, we believe, is what makes the monsoon work. If those cycles get out of whack, there's trouble. Climate modelers fear that rising global temperatures could alter the strength, timing, or location of these cycles. That, in turn, could alter the monsoon and make extreme weather, like that of the past, more likely, and even more extreme. Dry seasons could become drier and longer. When rain does come, it may be too heavy. Things may already be shifting. Here's the Vietnamese capital of Ho Chi Minh City in November 2007. People in Vietnam and surrounding countries are already closely packed, often close to sea level, and at the mercy of seasonal rains. They are at ground zero for climate change. In that part of the world, the monsoon is everything. I mean, it's, it, essentially the way we see it today, there's a period of about four months a year where there's virtually no rainfall in many parts of Southeast Asia. When it's reliable, you can flourish, and when it becomes unreliable during periods of multi-decadal scale drought, you're going to have a serious problem. And I think that's what we're seeing in the records. What will people here face in coming decades? Clearly, what has happened before can happen again. And now the stakes are bigger. In Ho Chi Minh City, just like everywhere else, we inhabit the earth in ever denser masses. We emit greenhouse gases that may complicate our already precarious arrangement with the weather. And we're leaning on all natural resources harder than ever. That includes Asia's few remaining ancient trees. People like Brendan Buckley are still seeking them out before they're all gone. Chopped down for building materials, firewood, and even higher knowledge. See this brand new Buddha? It was made from a big old Omu tree.